What's up people, Killboy here. I know there's um, a lot of you still waiting on your Mavic and some of you are just getting it and uh, soaking up any information that's out there that's not repetitive. So I thought I'd, I've had mine for a couple weeks now and I've learned a few things. Uh, some things surprise me, some things are kind of annoyance, but for the most part it's a really uh, nice piece of kit. Um, so I thought I'd put together a little video and share some of, the, of what I've figured out so far with you. The one thing I want to point out, um, that I think I would want to know if I were watching is I've never owned a DJI product before this. I've flown um, traditional helicopter, RC helicopters, um, and quad rotor, multi rotor um, UAVs for a few years, but I never really cared for DJI's Phantom line um, just basically because of the way it looks and the controller just really didn't feel right to me. Um, and I like the Inspire, but it was a little above what I needed, um, you know, as I was getting started. And um, so I'm not like a DJI big fan of their products um, at all, but this one's really, really impressed me. Um, so with that said, I want to run down a few pros and cons of what I've found so far. Um, first of all, the, the battery, they claim 27 minute flight time and I'm seeing a good 20 minutes, 20 plus minutes. So that's pretty impressive. I, you know, that was of course 27 minutes is in ideal flight conditions at slight forward flight speed of five miles an hour or something with no winds um, which you know you'll never end up in but to be able to get 20-25 minutes out of um, you know out of a battery that size that is by the way FAA um, travel legal size um, also I've already seen some videos of people losing their Mavic and um, getting it caught up in a palm tree and all this stuff you know get your little label maker or just a sticker or something and put your return information on there just something phone number or you know email address or something for people if they find it um, you know then there's a possibility that might be decent enough person to get back in touch with you and I put you know reward offered on mine um, okay so with I got the fly more kit that comes with a, a few extra things and one of the things that comes with is the car charger which is basically this guy right here so as you can see, it's still got a kind of big block to it, but unlike the AC charger, it does not have a USB plug on the little brick here itself, so you can't plug a USB cord into this to charge your um, controller like you can with the AC charger. But usually if you're in a car, you've got an AC uh, a USB plug somewhere in there, especially a more modern car. But the cool thing about this charger, okay, it's just got the same single plug on the end of it, but you can plug that into their four-way distributor thing and plug four and charge four batteries um, at the same time with this um, in series but this charger outputs at like five watts um, or five six amps sorry amps yeah six amps so this charger outputs at six amps and the AC charger outputs at two amps so this charger charges the batteries quite a bit faster um, easily twice as fast as the AC charger so if you're going to be doing a lot of uh, flying around and charging the batteries even at the house you might look into getting a um, like a 10 amp AC to DC adapter that will allow you to charge the batteries using the car adapter in the home um, but that's one cool point that I learned was that the DC adapter charges the batteries way quicker than the AC adapter. Uh, it transfers the videos and photos to the Android phone album or I think it does the same thing with iPhone. There's an option in the um, in the uh, menu system which in the in the app which allows you to turn on like the auto transferring thing but it's a little uh, inconsistent. I've I've had a hard time getting it to get the uh, photos into my um, photo album on, on Android so that I could, you know, upload them to something or whatever, Facebook or, or whatnot. So it's a little bit inconsistent, but it does have the option to, um, and it does eventually get them on there. It seems just like it takes a long time for photos to get over there for some reason, but, but videos will, will be on the phone almost immediately. Uh, sport mode doubles the speed to 40 miles per hour. But it disables forward sensors since it's going too fast to stop. So I thought it was pretty quick flying around when I first got it in the GPS mode, the uh, ad attitude mode, I think they call it. Uh, and that was top speed about 20 miles per hour. 
but then I started playing around with sport mode and I was like, wow, this thing, it, it moves. <laughs> um, has this cool sort of drift to it when you, when you go to slow down and it tries to, you know, kind of stop, but it's going so fast and you can just sort of do some cool maneuvers with it. So sport mode is pretty fun. You lose the forward sensing, but if you're, you know, up high enough or whatever, you're paying attention, then it shouldn't be a problem. You still get the downward sensing. Um, <clears throat> there is a optional um, app for controlling the drone besides the standard DJI Go app. Um, there's one called Leechy, and there's probably, there may be others too, but this is the more popular one. They've been around for a while. Um, I never really used it before, but I did end up purchasing it. It's a little bit um, you know, of an expense, but it's kind of worth it. It's got some features that uh, they, I guess that their, their selling point for Leechy was like the auto tracking where you could tap on the screen, but they've added that to DJI Go and, and there's a few other things about Leechy um, that the standard app, I think, doesn't have. But the big thing to me, the reason I bought it, basically, is that it supports Google Cardboard. So for those of you not familiar, Cardboard is a simple mechanism you can put on your head and slide your phone into that device. And it has a couple lenses that make it look farther away. And it splits the screen in half. And you get two different images, one for each eye. And you can view games and things like that. So Leechy supports that with this and it'll actually run the video from this into the uh, Google Cardboard style setup. Um, and it has head tracking, and which I thought was amazing. I tried it and it, it does do it. So basically as you're you know, wearing this thing, if you move your head up and down, the gimbal moves up and down with your head. You can turn that option on and off. I haven't, I'm not sure about the side to side thing. I haven't really played with it in flight enough um, to verify that but I just played with the up and down thing while it was sitting on the counter in the um, in the house and um, you know it works the problem is to put this to put the phone in the headset and get the feed from the controller to the phone you're gonna have to run a cable from a long cable from the controller uh, into the side of the headset into the phone you know I have to rig something up I haven't done that yet all I have is the well I've got a cardboard setup but I haven't tried it and I've got the Samsung Gear VR which plugs its own thing into the phone and you can't do it so I have to figure something out but it does support um, head tracking and the Google Cardboard thing with with the um, with the Leechy app, L-I-C-H-I is the name of that app for this, if you want to kind of look into it. They had like a sale going during Cyber Monday that I picked it up. The phone holding is very secure, and the transmitter itself is just really solid. I think I kind of covered this last time, but I know that, you know, maybe from from just making assumptions on how the phone goes in here and everything, you're probably like, eh, I'm a little flaky about putting my $800 phone inside this thing, it is snug. I mean, if you really put it in there solid like you're supposed to, these things have sort of a, a ramping mechanism back in the rubber, and as you push it back in there, it really clamps down. The whole thing is really solid, and honestly, this controller feels better to me than some game controllers. I think I like this controller better than the uh, PS4 controller. I just There's something about the way that it feels in the hand people keep bringing up you know just alien technology or something the design of this has been so outstanding to be a first generation product um, but the phone is in there really solid and this whole device um, this whole controller it just has no play in it at all it's got this really nice solid feel and um, metal arms and rubberized and all that it's really good uh, the sticks are removable a lot of people are kind of debating about this online but if you just grab it and pull on it they pop out um, they are notched and they don't screw in or screw out they just slide in and out so you do have to sort of get the alignment just right and i guess the first um, batches of the mavics they were um, easier to get out and it looks like there's just a little bit of red on the tip of that um, stick that's in there so i think they started putting just a little touch of loctite on there and it may be what's causing them to get to be harder to get out i've got one that's easy to pop out and one that's hard um, but they stay in fine and, and I don't think they're going to get loose over time or anything like that. Um, you're pushing on them with your thumbs basically when you fly so they're not going to fly out or anything. And it does offer the option maybe of other um, creators or companies, maybe some of these guys with 3D printers can make some different types of joysticks. Um, you could even do something like a, just a little bitty nub, you know, that just sticks up enough for you to control it but it doesn't stick out this far. But if you want to store this in your uh, pocket or something like that, you know, it will be slicker if you can remove those um, those joysticks. 
Um, okay, yeah, and this is really pretty cool. So I was watching one of the other channels, Drone Valley, Drone Valley um, YouTube channel and .com. Really good series of videos. This guy, man, he's like one of the best. I, I aspire to be as as good of a presenter as this um, this guy is because he just perfect, um, you know, presentation and everything. But uh, check out Drone Valley's YouTube channel. They have really good stuff. And he figured out basically that if you take this cable out from the side that you normally use for your phone, you can put a tablet in here. And what it is, it's got this hole in the side of each arm and the corner of the tablet goes up into that hole so you can put an iPad mini in between these two right here and then you have to run the cord from the bottom USB plug into the side of the, the iPad mini and he's got some uh, special cables that are really short and have a 90 degree uh, plug on them so it doesn't stick out and hit you in the hand so 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 harsh like a straight plug would but the fact that these arms have that little notch on both sides if you remove this obviously you have to remove that but the corners of the tablet kind of stick out of that hole right there and it accommodates a, a bigger tablet a pretty big tablet so that's a pretty nice um, design feature those are the pros now let's cover some of the cons of things I figured out this is the fly more bag and I know this has been kind of covered already that's a little bit small but I just wanted to reiterate the fly more bag will only hold the drone the controller and either a couple of batteries which I really don't think it was designed to do because these aren't that sturdy or it'll hold the AC adapter in the cord maybe but it's kind of ironic that the fly more package includes a case that will not hold everything that's in the fly more package um, so I'll probably be selling that what we ended up as a photography business of years we've got a bunch of extra stuff so what we ended up using was this camera bag that we weren't really using and it's just a small um, travel camera bag it works out perfect I can put the drone right in the front here controller goes down here with the little four-way adapter piece um, DC charger extra batteries in the corner here and then my AC charger goes in the front area up here so I don't know I mean like I said I talked about this in the previous video you may be better off just buying the parts that come with the fly more kit without the um, without getting the bag itself and maybe save a few bucks I don't know but uh, yeah the ironic it, the rock, it still kind of rubs me raw that the that the fly more combo comes with a bag that won't hold the fly more contents uh, the default settings out of the box for this thing are pretty twitchy for movie video use so there is a there's a couple of videos where they talk about suggested settings um, and I tried one of them and it just totally changed the, the personality you know of the Mavic to where it's a much better video machine so that video those video settings um that they changed and and um that the app you'll have to dig through it because everything's just kind of convoluted in the app and we'll go over that too but for smooth video settings um for y'all expo set it to 0 0.20 for y'all in stop end stop set it to 50 um for the gimbal smooth track i think they call it something else now um somewhere between 20 and 30 and then for gimbal speed, somewhere between 20 and 30. If you change those settings, it kind of tones everything down. And, uh, you know, it's a lot better of a video machine, like I said. Uh, you also have tripod mode. You can you can tap the little icon over on the left side of the app of the uh, top-down view of the quad and pick tripod mode, and that slows everything way down. That's maybe too much. These settings keep it still where it moves through the air, you know, as far as, like, how much uh, space it'll cover and distance it'll cover it moves to the air about the same but the changes that you put in with the sticks happen more gradually for video work so I think that's the that's the ticket to get to getting it is to go in and immediately sort of if you're going to use it for video work change those settings transmitter battery dies pretty quickly for me um, apparently this is dependent on the type of phone that you're using so for people that are using the iDevice, the, the Apple devices, iPhones and iTablets and things, um, apparently it does not charge them, is not charging them from the controller. But when I plug in my Samsung S7 Edge, it's charging my phone. And and so that, and, and so people that are using the, iP the iPhones and things are saying they can get like um, two hours of, of 
flight time out of the controller, I only get about one hour. I can do about three batteries and that controller is almost dead. So I don't know. I'm, ho I'm, I'm wishing that there was some kind of option to turn off charging to the phone. Um, I may just get an um, iPad mini or something like that just so that I can, you know, have a bigger screen and, and not have to worry about that thing killing the, killing the controller so fast. Range for me is not uh, anywhere near four miles, but it's not bad for everything being as small as it is. It's amazing. The range is, you know, probably easily a mile. I haven't pushed it out much farther past that, but once I get out close to about a mile, I start getting messages saying um, weak transmitter signal and stuff like that start coming up. Uh, I do get breaks in the video every now and then where it just goes like green chunks on the screen and it comes back. It's kind of scary, but. Um, they're pretty short duration, usually like two or three seconds, and it's back. Um, but I'm not seeing the four mile range that that they that they claimed. Um, I'm not sure what what planet they were on when they were getting that kind of range. But some people are getting pretty good range out of them. I just don't. I'm out in the mountains. I'm, there's not a lot of interference out here as far as uh, Wi-Fi, and I've usually got it, you know, line of sight over terrain that I can see it. Um, but still, like I said, after I, after I get out about 4,000, 5,000 feet or whatever, it starts giving me messages saying that, you know, the, the transmitter signal is getting kind of weak. Uh, DJI Go app menus are convoluted and unintuitive. So people who have been using DJI, they'll probably just pick right up on this. It won't be a problem. People that are coming into this without um, experience with their app, it seems like they've got it. They've got sections and sections on sections and, and some of the things that are related to the camera over here in the in the controller section and some of the things that are related to the gimbal are over here. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I always end up um, digging around to try to find where the setting was that I know was in there, turning off the LED lights on the front of the thing. They're not in the aircraft settings. They're over there in the specialty video settings or something. So um, not a big fan of the apps sort of layout on the menu layout part but i'm learning it and if you're used to it then you'll probably pick it up just fine but if you're new to it be patient um you're gonna have to do some you know sort of digging around to find things sometimes forgetting to focus before shooting sucks and i've shot a couple of times i'm starting to get into the habit pretty good of always focusing as soon as i get off the ground i just go ahead and focus but i really wish they would add the option um to autofocus when you start shooting video or, or you can go to take a photo or whatever, but um, it is what it is. You just have to get used to it. Getting the micro SD card in and out requires extending a leg, opening a clip on the door to probably fail over time. So if this thing's all folded up and I get home, I'm gonna get the micro SD card out. It's over here under this little flat door right here and it's hanging on a rubber deal. I don't expect that to last forever. And then if it's all folded up, the legs are in the way. So I've got to move this leg um, back out of the way and get the card out. Um, I don't know, it seems like it'd be easier if it was up by the camera or something, but it's not that big a deal. And you can also, there's another door and again, a little rubber flappy thing on this side that I don't feel like is going to last forever, but there's a USB micro, like Android plug on the side here that you can just plug the, the drone straight into your computer and get the video off. See, I'm having a hard time getting that thing to shut and get the video off. Um, you know, without having to take the micro SD card out. Yeah, things are finicky. There we go. And I saw another person on a video, I think it was Drone Valley, pop this off and it flew uh, across the table. So, not a big deal, but is what it is there too. Piece on the flown plug pops off. Okay, yeah, so this, there's a little... I don't know. When you get it, you'll just know what I'm talking about, but you can't see it on here. I'll, I'll never be able to get this thing to focus on that little bitty ring that's on this plug that goes in your phone. But there's a little ring that's separate from the plug, and um, it, it goes inside this track, and if you don't keep it in there, it, it can fall off, and if you lose that little ring, then this plug is just going to be flopping around. So um, I don't know. That's one of the things. But now that I've got it, I had it where it wasn't in that track, and I was... It was my mistake. I, put, I hadn't, didn't have it in there the correct way. So now that it's in there, it should be pretty good good to go. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a little second piece that you got to keep up with. For setup, uh, I learned one more thing that needed to be calibrated. Um, you don't have to do these calibrations out of the box. You don't have to. You know, you can take it out of the box and fly it if you want to. But there's people who are having problems with these things. Um, and you know doing things that we're expecting spinning around and drifting and things like that I haven't had any problems 
with any of that out of mind, it's it's flown absolutely solid. I've probably run through a dozen or so packs. Um, but I did calibrate everything except this one thing that I learned about a couple of days ago was um, you can also calibrate the camera's focusing system. But you absolutely need to calibrate the compass when you get it. And they they recommend you do it anytime you significantly, significantly change locations. Um, but I haven't had too many problems with the with the compass uh, with the rotation of it, you know, holding steady. But uh, the controller sticks, you know, I think that's a big thing because people were talking about the problems with the controls not doing what they um, you know wanted, and they had not con had not calibrated the controller sticks. So it's in the menus of the Go app. Calibrate the IMU again. Pay attention. It's a picture, and it tells you to put it like this. And then if you blink, it's another picture and it says to put it like this and it's waiting on you. And I ended up, took, got frustrated and took me like forever to figure out how to calibrate the IMU. And it's just because I didn't know that it wanted me to move it. Um, but you can also calibrate the camera's focusing mechanism. And they recommend you do this um, when you first get it at least. And the initial, you know, before the initial flight, calibrate the camera focusing system. Um, I saw a video where somebody was getting like really blurry focus all around the outside but they had a good focus in the center it looked almost like tilt shift look kind of cool actually but it's not something that you are going to want all the time so they had to do that focus calibration thing and it fixed it okay so i think that about covers it um brace. oh yeah so one trick i, I kind of figured out when you're when you're taking this um this cover on and off and it's been established do not fly it with this cover on because there is an inlet vent right behind this that cools the whole circuitry mechanism along with this heat sink right here, this metal heat sink and it gets pretty hot. This is a very um, sort of compact hot system, this whole thing and so it needs that airflow. But when you're taking the gimbal cover, um, well especially when you're putting it back in, um, aim the, the, the camera down and it'll kind of pull the gimbal out to where you can work behind it and get this little this little brace popped in that you need to leave in there when you're try when you're not flying it so that the gimbal doesn't flop around. If without this in there, that gimbal is pretty, it's pretty shaky. Um, but when I was trying to put this in, with like the camera facing up, it's falling down right to where I need to try to get in there, and it's 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 fighting you the whole time. You're trying to put this brace in, and it's catching on the camera and all that. So point it downwards, slide the gimbal brace in, good to go. And then you can pop this guy on. All right, so yeah, and then this, I had this little dude over here. This just came in today. We got a couple of these from me and my wife to kind of start playing around with FPV. But I thought it'd be cool to show you, you know, this is a 220 size FPV, um, you know, rig, and this is how much larger the Mavic is. And then for an extreme example here, this is my splash drone, you know, waterproof um, drone, and it's, it's pretty big. This one's bigger than than the um, Phantoms and the 3DR solo by just a little bit. But uh, yeah, I thought that would be cool just sort of give you an idea of the difference in sizes. All right, so there you go. If you have any questions, you know, leave them in the comments. If you want me to cover anything else about it, um, I'll be glad to. Just let me know what you want. And um, I'll put a uh, link in the comments in the description for um, how you can order through my affiliate link. If you, if you can do that, if you plan on ordering one, I appreciate it. And, uh, of course, like and subscribe, you guys. Thank you. Have a good day.